right, I'm uh, very glad to have uh, three single people from our church uh, here joining me for this conversation. Uh, Tamara, why don't you introduce yourself first, and then we'll go to Nathan and Hannah. Hi, I'm Tamara Paulison, and um, all my children are grown. Uh, I have three children. My youngest is 28. Um, I was married 29 years, and I've been single for 14 years. Okay, very good. Nathan? Well, my name is Nathan. I have a 10-year-old daughter, and I've been single since she was five. Okay. Hannah? My name is Hannah. I am fresh out of college since May 2019, um, and I've been single all my life. <laughs> but first question, what are one or two uh, habits or practices or attitudes that's been most important to your singleness being healthy. So I'm really wildly curious, you know, different stages of life for all of you. What are habits, practices, or attitudes that you think, yeah, that's been really important to be healthy? So mine has been um, happiness is found in gratefulness. And um, that's even a post that I have on social media. And I think it's because in order to be happy, you have to be happy with what you have and you have to be grateful that God has blessed you with everything whether it be family friends you know what you have in your career that's awesome thanks Tamara yeah I would say that um, five years ago when we decided to separate that I realized that there was a lot of uh uh, issues with myself that led up to that moment and that I've spent probably the past, especially the first two or three years of that uh, separation, giving myself extreme self-care, extreme self-care while I go through it and also learning about myself and anytime you go through a divorce or a major life change, the change can kind of snowball into a bigger change. And I kind of encouraged that in my life was to embrace the change. Excellent. I'm going to come back to both of those, but I'm curious what's on the top of your mind, Hannah. Um, I think, I don't know if I'd call it a habit or an attitude, but I feel like in a lot of situations, whenever people are talking about relationships in marriage, um, people have frequently asked me the question like, oh, if your future husband walked through the door right now, would you be ready to be like a good godly wife? Um, and so that's a question that has always stuck with me. And I've never been in a phase where I could say yes. Um, and just mulling over that question, realizing that if I think I want to be in a relationship, maybe it's just that I'm looking for deep friendships um, and recognizing that I'm not ready, that I have things to work on with my relationship with God and on myself. So that's a pretty habitual reminder for me. That's really good. So I'm going to go back through that with all three of you and try to push into like uber practical stuff. So Tamara, you were talking about this gratitude, this gratefulness. I'm curious if there's like practices or habits or things you do to make sure you stay grateful. Um, no, I don't, I don't really think there's anything in particular. Um, I, I'm just in, I guess, awe that, you know, I, I'm in awe of everything that I have. And, you know, I've lost a child. Um, so my oldest, you know, that I said, been 38, um, you know, she was killed in a car accident. And when something like that happens to you, you learn to take the little things and just be happy for them. And even the little moments, it's not the big things. It's not even the material things. It's everything. And you realize that you really are blessed, even though 
you know, maybe some bad things happened to you in the past, but you really are blessed. I always felt like, you know, God was watching out for me. I can agree with that too, Greg. I, just for an example, when I was going through my divorce, my mom died. Hmm. And on the two-year anniversary of her death, I woke up and my car was stolen out of my driveway. <laughs> <laughs> What's the blessing in that is that I didn't have to think about my mom's two year anniversary. And I also got to distract everybody else in my family that was sending text messages. When I woke up, my first text message was my car was stolen and that emergency <laughs> kind of took off. And, and the, the, the true blessing of it all was that with the, the insurance payout with it not being found, I ended up with a much nicer car than I had before that. And if you just are patient with the, and the bad things happening in your life, you can you can find some of the good things that go along with it too. I always think of the song "Count Your Blessings." Hmm. Yeah, yeah, which is which is really you know count them one by one, right? This is an old hymn, but it, that is that is kind of the habit part of it, right? Is to to actually pause long enough and think about that. So, and I do, you know, I love to like in the summer I'll go sit on my swing. And I'll go have my tea in the morning, and I, I have my one-on-one -on -one with God, and I just tell Him how grateful I am. Yeah. And I'm so grateful to be blessed. So Nathan, you were talking about self-care. Um, you know, are there some particular things that you've integrated, like self-care practices, counsel, you know, re reflection, things like that? Yeah, it, it was more so at the very beginning of uh, not being with my daughter every day and getting used to uh, living alone and things like that, that, uh, you know, I, I would even go as far as to, they say you should get closer to the, to the earth to ground yourself. So it was good to go outside and like lean against the tree in my backyard or just lay, against, lay on the ground and just let the, the wind blow over me. You know, and take that time to, you know, be able to uh, listen to teachings or, uh, you know, just kind of allow myself the space to to heal instead of a lot of people who are encouraging me, no, you need to get back to work. You need to, you know, you need to push through this. You need to do whatever you can to let it, you know, help it get past. But I, I was more about embracing it and, and getting through that the moment with uh, whatever it took for me to get through that hour that that afternoon or that day yeah 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 divorce is a really hard thing to get through um it it it, it kind of rips you from the inside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's kind of why i was interested in greg not to interrupt but it's, it's kind of why i was interested in being this phone call tonight because i see a lot of people my age that do get divorced and instead of going through the pain and the process that it takes which should be years a lot of people end up in another relationship or another marriage within the next eight to 12 months. Mm -hmm. No, I, my goodness, if I could encourage pushing pause, right. It, when you go through anything in life, but I mean, divorce is one of those events in life that, that has, you know, or, or the death of someone, all those things. Like we, we tend to try to actually, it's almost like medicating that we jump back in. Right, it's, it's so that we don't feel what's going on. Um, yeah. So, Hannah, you know, like I said, you're young. You're 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 brand new at this. Um, you know, and that was a really interesting question that obviously someone's asked you. Like, hey, would you be, would you be ready? So, um, like, what what are the practices you put in place? Like, you're kind of talking about, you know, paying attention to your relationship with God and and who you are. But how do you actually do that? Um, I think a lot of it has been through just like personal quiet times with God. Um, and I think a lot of the reflection on that question just comes from the phase of life that I'm at right in because I did just graduate from college. I did move away from home to a completely new state. Um, I am in a new place where I'm in a new church and trying to build friendships and community there. Um, and so I think there's just a lot of things that I have to work on 
with myself and with God um, and just try to continually listen to what I'm supposed to be doing, how passions fit into his plan for me, um, that I don't think I would be ready to also focus on someone else being in my life in that way. Um, and so, yeah, I think just the common practice of spending time with God and going over what my priorities are and what I'm trying to focus on and where I'm at with myself and how I feel about myself um, has taken place over worrying about being in a relationship or not. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you all a personal question. Uh, I mean, I, I kind of invited you into this call on this basis, so I trust you'll answer it, but if you don't want to, you can opt out. I'm curious, do you envision yourself getting married or married again someday? Like, do you hope for that in your future? Give me a short answer to that, and then I have kind of a follow-up uh, from there. So, Tamara, how about you first? Um, at first, I thought I was going to, and as the years passed, I really don't think so, and I've kind of be I've become comfortable with me. Mm -hmm. Good. Nathan? I've come to realize that I don't know anything for certain, so I'm not going to put any of my own judgments on what might or might not happen, because I get, uh, I get shocked any time I do that in a good way. Uh-huh. Anna? Um, I would like to eventually be married and have a family, I think. So. <laughs> Well, it, one of the reasons I ask is obviously I have a, a question that's going to kind of aim at some of that here in a second, but I, I was struck by your, all three of your answers at the beginning. And of course, I was obviously aiming to have healthy people on this call, so I'm not surprised, but I think there is such an instinct in some people that says, I need to be married, right? Or I need to be in a relationship. And it's almost like someone might feel incomplete without that. And I, I heard a lot of contentment from the three of you. Not that it will necessarily always be that way, but it's not the driving force in your life right now. Is that a fair way to describe that? I would say yes. Um, at first, I really did. I thought I was going to get married, and I was on dating sites for a while, and finally, about five years ago, I just got off of them, and I put it in God's hands and I said, you know what, God, if you want me to meet somebody, you're going to put them in my life. And if you don't, I'm okay with that too. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm comfortable in my own skin. I don't need to be married. I've already had my children. I've had my life and, you know, it was a great family life and I'm okay with that. So now it's like me time. Yeah. Well, I was, uh, I was in a four-year relationship right after high school, my high school sweetheart. And then I was single for about 11 months and I got into a relationship with my daughter's mom that lasted for 12 years. So when I was 34, I was basically in a relationship my entire adult life. And uh, my, I met a girl, I met a woman about three or four months after I went and, and kind of hit it off. But then I had that same feeling inside of me that I had when I was with both of those women. I was like, if, if those were true love, then why do I still have it with this woman I just met that I don't even know that lives three hours away? Why am I trying to force this relationship to happen when there's absolutely no signs pointing to it being a, a good fit? Hmm. So it's kind of, it was kind of something where I, I knew that there was something inside of me I needed to work on before I would decide to even pursue a serious relationship. Yeah. So, so this is kind of my second question here is, you know, I kind of asked if you are moving toward marriage or you're at least open to that, um, how do you prepare yourself for that as much as finding the one? And I've kind of heard from you that like none of you are in that mode of like, I have to find the one, especially right now. But how are you preparing yourself for what might be future marriage? So this might be more Nathan and Hannah, if if Tamara doesn't quite picture it that way. But um, yeah, I'll go first if you want, Hannah. 
Okay. So I have this daily reading and just from a couple of weeks ago and it was like exactly what, how I feel about marriage or anything else really. It's called the good or the best. This reading says, as soon as you begin to live the life of faith in God, fascinating, physically gratifying possibilities will open up before you. These things are yours by right, but if you're living life of faith, you'll exercise your right to waive those rights and let God make your choice for you. God sometimes allows you to get in a place of testing where your own welfare would be the appropriate thing to consider if you were not living the life of faith. But if you are, you will joyfully waive your right and allow God to make your choice for you. This is the discipline God uses to transform the natural into the spiritual through obedience to his voice. Whenever your right becomes the guiding factor of your lives, it dulls your spiritual insight. The greatest enemy of life of faith in God is not sin, but good choices which are not quite good enough. The good is always the enemy of the best. So what I might want isn't necessarily what's right for me. And I've seen it in a real life example, even in just the past few weeks, I mentioned like what happened a couple of years ago with my car and what I wanted was for my car to be there when I woke up, <laughs> you know, exactly. I ended up with something better a week later. So I, I shouldn't be mad about it. And just a few weeks ago, my, the house that my grandfather built was put up for sale in Hammond and we went to go look at it and there's a possibility I could have bought it. And it was all going well throughout the weekend. And then on Monday it went under contract and somebody else bought it. You know, if I would have grabbed the bull by the horn and done what I wanted, what was my, I felt was my right, it would have happened, but I was letting it go and seeing what God was going to do. And he ended up making it not happen. So I can't be mad about it. And I feel that same way about if I meet somebody or don't meet somebody, it's not really up to me. And the best result comes out of it. I don't want just, what's good, what I think might be good. I want the best that's coming for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's gold. Thanks, Nathan. That's really good. Yeah. Hannah? Yeah. I would agree with also focusing on like God's timing and what he thinks is best. Um, Cause I definitely haven't always felt this content about being single. I feel like it's ebbed and flowed. Um, And I feel like I'm in an age group where the women around me are constantly talking about relationships and are you in one? Do you want to be in one? Do you want to get married? Um, And I feel like my attitude changes all the time in those conversations. Um, But lately, a lot of it has been focusing on, well, like God hasn't brought anyone into my life. Um, But I also just new area where I don't have a lot of friends so knowing that that is a focus for me and just building a community in general and knowing that potentially a relationship could come out of that but that not being a priority or main focus of this transition phase in my life um but also knowing um I like the saying how can you love you have to love yourself before you can love somebody else um, and know that I have to work on being okay with myself and being okay being by myself um, and learning to love myself. And it's definitely been something that I'm working on and getting better at. Um, and just constantly having the realization in those conversations about relationships with people that I might be feeling lonely, but that's not necessarily something that a boyfriend is going to fix and that it's unfair to place all that expectation on one singular person. Um, And that maybe it's just that I need to build and expand my community and create more friendships um, or work on my relationship with God and bring that to him. Um, And so it definitely took a lot of time for me to get to this mindset about it. Um, but I think focusing on God, doing Bible studies about, um, preparing yourself and your heart for a relationship or a marriage, because it is something I want. I know I want a family, so I think a husband probably would also come with that. (laughs) Um, so yeah, I think I'd keep rambling if I don't just end the sentence. (laughs) That's great, Anna. Thank you.
you have to learn to love yourself before you can love somebody else in a relationship. Mm-hmm. So how do you do that, Tamara? I think you have to not beat yourself up. And I think let yourself know that you're a good person. Um, you know, not everything that happens is your fault. Um, because I think after a while it starts, you know, you start having doubt. And I think that's very easy when you're single. Um, you know, I have a 31-year-old daughter who's single. And so, you know, she tells me a lot of her plight. And, and I do believe that, you know, you just beat yourself up. You're like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I find that special someone or, you know. If you're not looking, it makes you wonder. Um, you know, I, I, I think that's a big thing when you are single, is that you, you have a lot of self-doubt and you kind of, you beat yourself up too hard. Yeah, I see Hannah and Nathan's head shaking on, on that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's tough in, in this world to uh, just hear everybody talking about, you know, what you should be doing and just not understanding that there's there's more to, uh, you know, life than just being in a relationship with somebody else. And, and the best relationship you could have is to help keep watering the spirit inside of you and and learn what what God's doing all around you. I mean, he does little things like puts a hawk on my front porch on my mom's you know, birthday. Like it's just too cool to like pass that up. Like I, we have, we have this total relationship going on that I can't, you know, I, if somebody else wants to join it, that's cool. But I'm just having like a, it's just, there's extraordinary things that happen just even in the littlest things that, that I can't explain that I just want to keep growing this relationship. So I got to tell you, and this probably won't surprise the three of you, but I do feel like so I'm a, I'm a pastor and I'm married. When I talk to single people and they're maybe struggling with being single, if I give them the answer, well, you got to develop your relationship with God first. I always feel like they're looking at me like, yeah, Greg, easy for you to say. You're married, you know, what, whatever. So I just need you guys to keep saying all the things that you're saying. <laughs> because, like, this is on display right here, honestly. Like, man, if you, if you start chasing the relationships ahead of having yourself in a right relationship with God it doesn't end well right that's that's how I feel that I would be too distracted to see some of the things that I'm supposed to be seeing going on around me if I added that other wrinkle to life you know I, I there's I, I get to pick up my daughter from school three days a week and drop her off two days a week I still get to see her every single day which is something God made happen in my life. And, and I wouldn't notice a lot of the things that are going on with her or to me if I was too busy focused on, you know, making somebody else happy or, or you know, if, if uh, you know, whatever we're going to be doing that evening. Yeah. So let me ask you guys this. That starts to get at it, Nathan. What are the benefits of being single? What, what, what are the good parts of being single? During quarantine? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, though, I, like I, I, I know of people that are in very happy marriages that were, that were not doing so well during two months of quarantine, but I was, you know, it, it was basically every day of my life. You know, I kind of quarantined myself from, from too much for the past three or four years, it seems like. Um, I don't know if that answers the question or not, but the, yeah, I'm just curious, like what, what, when you think about like, what's the benefit of, of being single? So that's, that's a good answer. Curious. Yeah. And I was, I was asked, you know, like late last night, would I go on this call this evening? I was able to just free up my time just like that whenever I want to, you know, I can just kind of pick up and go and, and, you know, I, I do a lot of traveling for work too. And, you know, I don't have to make way too many arrangements just to keep everybody happy and just kind of it's what I have to do right now so I'm going to do it and I don't know if it's going to hurt me in the long run as far as finding relationship because I'm so comfortable being alone but it's 
it is it's pretty nice while you are single right Hannah mm -hmm. yeah I feel like especially as I am entered into this new adult phase of my life that I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do with my life and where I want to be and where I want to go and where God wants me to go um and I can't imagine having to consider another person in that like I frequently joke that people would never know what's going on in my life unless they're Facebook friends with my mom um and I don't think being in a relationship with someone that that form of communication would fly because they'd have to be involved in the decisions that I make um and know what I'm up to know what I'm thinking um and so it's nice to not have to worry about that and know that I have the time to figure out myself and where I'm going without having to worry about where someone else is also going. Yeah. Tamara, how about you? Benefits of being single? Wow. Well, yeah. Um, with children for 25 years and did it all, you know, did the cooking and the cleaning and the running and, you know, the kids were involved in everything. Um, and I was married for 29 years. So, um, you know, I, I did everything for everybody else. And then, you know, once I got divorced and I left home, um, I get to do what I want. I get to buy what I want. You know, that's if I can afford it, of course. Um, I can go where I want. Um, so it, it's a freedom that, of course, I never did have prior to you know, so now I can kind of test. Um, you know, I did go to church all my life. So, you know, God's been with me all the way through. Um, you know, from the time I was a baby, I've been in church. Uh, so that's not new. Um, but I, I like, I do like the freedom uh, and the choices that I get to make. Um the bad part is, you know, of course there are times where it's lonely. Um, I have friends that are married. And so, you know, they can't, they don't come around a lot. You know, they're doing things with their husbands. And, you know, it seems like most of my friends are, are married. Uh, Tamara, I'm breaking up a little bit. But I, I, Tamara, I can, I can vouch for that, too, that some of the downsides of being single is that when most of your friends are uh, married or married with children and you know there's just uh, you, you kind of you kind of miss I miss those moments that I did have when it, when I was you know in a relationship with my daughter's mom you know so it, but you know and then sometimes you go on you might go on dates and be the fifth wheel or kind of tag along with somebody else and it could be a, a little awkward but um, yeah I, I think that there's plenty of benefits that that outweigh that too. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Well, I I really appreciate you guys doing this call. And, you know, one of the phrases I use all the time is life's on the other side of awkward, right? So, you know, there's times when you have to push through things that aren't comfortable, single or married. But I want to say to the three of you and any singles that are, you know, watching this, that I know sometimes churches are built for married people and families, it seems like, more than singles. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to solve that completely, but I do want you to know I'm aware of it. I care about it. Suncrest cares about it. And um, I'm very interested in continuing to get better because there's so many single people in all kinds of different situations. And uh, to leave out that portion of the population or make them feel in any way like they're, they're a third wheel at church is not, you know, what I want to create at all. So I welcome your feedback all the time. Um, this is going to kick us off the recording here in just a, a moment. So let me just say thank you to you guys. And I'm going to stop the recording right here.